a commercial craft that is powered by wings that orient their cells to the sun and the water to collect the maximum energy. Sailors have been using the wind to get around for centuries, but what if those sails could also harness the power of the sun? Well, that's the promise of a new vessel ready to replace traditional ferry services all over the world. The first step, a small racing catamaran powered by the sun. We couldn't have done this 20 years ago because the technology wasn't here. And right now, at the beginning of this century, we're entering a hybrid electric phase of, of transport. Looking for the loon or south of Aurelia. Looks like it's up there. We've got houseboats, we've got cruisers, but no one's really built the pop up trailer on the water, which is really just a box on the water that you can sleep in and that you can prepare your meals in and live comfortably in. It depends on whether the skipper is left-handed or right-handed. The boat is ambidextrous. In my case, I'm right-handed, which means you want to leave your right hand free. Ahoy! Typically for the speed controls and for the forward and reverse switches. I would like to steer with my left hand, so I sit here, and for the duration of our Rideau trip, this would be my position, my family around me. I can build two boats at a time, as you can see. And uh, this one here is it's about to go down to its next stage of production, which is uh, in Barrie where the aluminum work will be finished off and the solar canopy will be built for it as well as the railing to go around the boat. Okay, aluminum? Uh, stainless steel railing stainless steel. and aluminum solar canopy that holds the solar panels. Right. So it's finished to this point, it'll go down there, it'll have that work done, it'll come back here and we'll finish it off to look more like that right there. So this is at the Rideau Canal? Yeah, right on the Rideau. And you went 150 miles you say? 100 it's 137, I believe, is what it works out to. And it cost you zero for fuel. Well, uh, yeah, but uh, technically, I guess it cost me three dollars because um, um, although uh, it was included in my moorage fees, the actual electricity over and above what the sun was providing for our boat comes to about three dollars for that trip. Three dollars. Three dollars. That could, that couldn't even get you up on plane with uh, most of the larger boats that we encountered on the way. Like that pachanga back there probably needs that much just to turn the key. Just to turn the key. So we can do the whole Rideau Canal system on, the, on that low dollar. The way that they're cranking them out today with this marine ply that rots after five years, who wants a boat that you have to do a major reconstruction in five years? I guess it's an advantage for me though, being on a highway location on a major cottaging route, I get to get the message out to the right crowd very easily. But this well, is the main boat that we sell here. It's called the Cruise. Basically, it does exactly what its name says it does. You cruise with it. It's good for about two and a half to three hours of cruising time, and it seats six people very comfortably. That's a cruise. Yeah, this is a plug-and-play electric boat. In fact, it's the boat that um, uh, planted the seat in my head to build the loon. What if the boat was longer, mm -hmm. and while you're at it, you've got this real estate. Why don't you put solar panels on the overhead area, exactly. and that could also act as sun shelter. Wouldn't that be a wonderful idea? So this is the prototype, eh? Yeah, this is the Model T. This is the first, uh, first try at it. Thought about it all these years and developed all the ideas in my head. I built the Loon 1. Here comes Loon 1. So the idea kept rattling around inside my head to a point where two years ago I had to act on it. Hey! Hey! Saved by a foot. That's all right there. And you know what? That's even correct in the metric system. <laughs> there you go. My father's always said that I'm 10% Edison and 90% P.T. Barnum. This is the Tamarack Lake Electric Boat Company. Tamarack Lake is Schedule 3 Lake, which means only electric boats are allowed. Impetus to start up my electric boat company. How many of you are working solar? One here. You're, you're the one. <laughs> Two in the world, so, so <laughs> that's... <laughs> you the man. I the man. And there's another fellow, uh, his name is Christoph Bailing in Germany, yeah. and he just built a solar-powered ferry for the Thames River in London. It's an amazing vessel, and uh, so is mine. They're different products. His is a, a larger uh, passenger-carrying vessel. Mine are more of a recreational boat-type product that people can just buy and go to the Rideau Canal, like we just came back from uh, this weekend. My family and I lived aboard this boat the entire time. Yeah. There's a galley with running water, refrigerator, microwave, 
and the sleeping accommodations for four people. The side curtains come down, and it becomes basically like a, like a pop-up trailer on the water. And my family lived aboard it for the full time that we were doing the Rideau Canal, right from Kingston to Ottawa, a distance of uh, 204 kilometers. Think of this as kind of like a solar-powered cabin that actually moves through the water. The boat itself is really quite light. In fact, we're using space-age materials. There's composites in the, all the furniture, like this galley here. And this is an extruded vinyl deck, which weighs much less than a regular plywood deck with carpet on it would weigh. Okay. Which means it's non-slip surface. It's much safer than, say, a Good idea. plywood or... And or it's, it's going to drain away with yes. these slats? Yeah, it goes, water would go into the slats and drain off very quickly. It actually okay. goes on a channel, which then runs off the boat. There's no wood in the construction of the boat at all, and the rationale behind that is that, well, quite simply, wood rots. The tiller here for steering, there's a motor directly below me here, which um, is powered by eight batteries, two in each bench area, and that's what provides the motive power to the outboard motor. This okay. meter here is called an E-meter. And what an E-meter does is it's basically a very accurate fuel gauge for your batteries. Those green dots there that you see, mm -hmm. it's like a gas gauge. Mm -hmm. um, as you deplete the charge, you'll see three buttons, and then two buttons, then one button, then one button will flash. And that means you should be within two or three miles from your uh, recharging station. But it takes eight hours to get to that point, so you've got lots of range with this boat. You've got a full charge going in there right now. Presently, I do. And the 62.1 that we're looking at that's, right now? That's volts. And what that tells you is that um, it's a 48 volt system. Mm -hmm. And at the end of charge, it's around 62 volts, which means basically you've got a full tank here. And you can go for, like I say, 8 to 10 hours of cruising time based on this charge right now. What did you say your uh, charging rate is right now? Presently, we're at uh, about 10 amps charging. But there is a bit of uh, overcast, so it goes up to 15 at peak. Mm -hmm. So having done the Rideau Canal, our average daily leg was 25 miles. And typically we ended off at the end of the day with half a charge still left in the batteries. Half of the energy that we required to get us on our daily legs would come from the sun and the other half would come in from shore power. We just plug in at the marinas or the lock stations where we stayed and that's where the second half of our energy would come from. We were getting um, about half of our energy from the sun and half from shore power. What would happen would be we'd wake up in the morning with a full charge of batteries because of course they were charging overnight. You take that day and you go on the day's leg typically 25 miles, and then at the end of that day, you get to your marina or your lock station, and you simply plug it in like any other boat would. And, uh, but typically, we'd have half a charge still left at the end of the day, so there was always a great degree of comfort during the entire trip that we had more than enough energy to do what we had to do that day.